Hello, hello everyone. This is Ted Simpson, Certified Bob Ross Instructor, and today I'm doing a little bit of a narration as my sound was not on when I was recording. So I'm going to be doing a little seascape here today. And the first thing I'm going to do on my black gesso canvas is put a little piece of painter's tape up here um, to define my horizon line. And as you see here, well, we want it to be just a little bit above the halfway point. Okay, and if you have to do it a couple times like me, try to find out, get it just nice and straight. Well, as straight as you can get it. And sometimes I'll use my brush to measure it out a little bit. Looking at it after the fact here, it's maybe a touch higher on the left side than the right side, and that's okay. As long as it's close enough, it should look just fine. So, the next step of putting uh, a seascape to canvas here is covering the entire canvas with just a, a thin, thin amount of the liquid clear. Bob came up with the liquid clear and started using it in season 10. Uh, the episode that we're working here is season 13, episode 12, I believe. And uh, here we go. We're just scrubbing it in, putting a thin coat here. And it, it takes a little bit of effort here to kind of scrub it in. A, a little goes a long way. And as you'll see here in a minute, we're going to wipe off the excess here. You don't want too much. Things can get a little soupy on you. So if you scrub it in as best you can and make the whole canvas somewhat shiny, then we'll lightly go over it with the paper towel and get it just right. Using the liquid clear is always recommended on a black canvas. Putting this uh, under color right onto a dry canvas, it's, it's tough. And since this is the wet on wet technique, Bob came up with the liquid clear for use for all black canvases. It's really recommended that you put just that thin, even coat. Not enough to really thin the paint. Just enough so we can slide and blend color a lot easier. All right. Looks like I've scrubbed that in pretty well. Got it into all the little nooks and crannies. So we're not trying to scrub everything off, just trying to get it, uh, you know, just a little bit left on there. Take the, take the edge off, take the shine away, and I think we should be good to go. Yeah, scrubbing it, you know, will make the canvas a little too dry. So quick and easy, easy peasy. Flitter your hands back and forth. <laughs> and we should be good to go. Here I am just saying the same stuff I just went over. So, the next step will be to put some under color on. The under color we're using today is a bit of the alizarin crimson, a little bit of midnight black, and just enough blue to give us a dark purple feel. You scrape it all up, you spread it out, a little bit of blue goes a long way. See, we add that just a little bit at a time. And you start to see kind of the, the residue on the palette there. It kind of gives you an idea what the color is. The black is just to darken it, dull it down a little bit, so it's really up to you. And I'm flattening down a little bit of the phthalo blue to use by itself. So I tap my brush into a little bit of a paint. I'm going with the purple color now. Just bash some in on both sides of the brush and that's good enough to do a pretty big section. Just spread it out there, load a little bit more, and work on another section. 
this is a transparent color, so it is going to be difficult to see. Now I go into the straight phthalo blue and I sort of feather out the edges of that purple and work the rest of it into the remaining parts of the canvas up top there. Grind it in, stir it in, crisscross it in. It's all good. We don't want to overwork it or else we'll start taking the color right back off. Now I'm going through the process here of cleaning out my brush, I'm beating it on a uh, waste paper basket with a piece of PVC pipe running through it. That allows me to get that brush deep into the, into the trash can and not spray paint thinner all over the room. So we want to make sure that we get that brush super clean, super dry, so that we can add some undercolor to the bottom half or so of the canvas. And uh, the only colors we're using on the bottom half is a little bit of the phthalo green and phthalo blue. So I tap a little bit of phthalo green and I just want this into the part here where where my big crashing wave is going to be. So I drop it in just a little bit like that and we're pretty much done. Figure out where that crashing part of the wave is going to be and just drop in that color. I feather it up a little bit and then using the phthalo blue I just fill in the rest. I might have a little bit more of the phthalo green on my brush but that phthalo blue should, should fill it up pretty quick. It should cover that color in your brush and you really won't see as much. But you can see here, I've got a lot of bright lights shining on my canvas here. So you can see the color a lot easier than if uh, you might see when you're doing this at home. So what I like to tell my students is, if basically if you can see the color with not a lot of light on the canvas, you're probably loading too much. Like I said before, this is a transparent color. It should just look black. All right. Doing some final little adjustments here, talking about where my big crashing wave is going to fall over. And like with that being said, I think our canvas is prepped and we're time where it's time to start building out the sky. You want to make sure that you get all the paint thinner off your brush. Paint thinner and liquid clear don't really like each other. So you want that brush to be pretty dry, as dry as you can get it. I'm using a newer brush here that's not so puffy like the brush I use to put the undercolor on. And I'm using a very, very small amount of the titanium white. As you can see, I'm pulling it down and just tap, 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 working it into the brush a little bit. You don't need very much. Comparing my brushes here with the old blown out one and, and a brand new one. And uh, to put these clouds in, all I'm going to do is tap and move. Tap, tap, tap. Get the color off. That's really the only step here is to get some color working outwards. That's it. And then I'm going to use the old brush there and lightly soften it, kind of swinging that brush from side to side and blending out the bottom. Blending it out, allowing it to travel down and pick up that undercolor so that that cloud is brighter on the top and faded out at the bottom. After I fade it out at the bottom, I just sweep across it a couple of times to soften the rest of the paint. And then I just move on. Probably the hardest step. 
you just got to move on. Tap a basic shape in there. Blend out the bottom. Look how that picks up that purple color. Gives that cloud a bit of shadow at the base. And then once or twice, maybe three or four, we soften the rest of it. You can see as I type tap in, different spots here have different amounts of color. Some have a little bit more blue. Some have a little bit more purple. Especially that last cloud I'm putting in right here. Over on the right side, definitely more blue. And that's good. Variation is always a good thing. Pull it, tap it, sweep across it. I am barely touching the canvas. Barely touching. For this cloud down on the right side here, I'm really trying to fade that down. I want to lighten up that bottom portion of the sky. You're going to see me put a little bit more color in. Because we want it to be nice and brighter down in that scene for uh, one of the steps we have coming up. In this style of painting, we work light against dark, dark against light. So we're going to try to put a little bit more light into the sky there, just so we can cover some of it up. A couple of last little sweeps across the canvas, and our sky is basically done. No need for stars or anything else in here. You put as many clouds as you want into your sky. I think we're about ready to pull the tape off. Oh, you can see the dry canvas there. I'm going to take a couple of moments here. I'm going to pick up a little bit of that color just by sweeping across it with the brush and scrubbing it into that dry part. I probably could have used a smaller piece of tape, not so, uh, not so wide there. This is basically what Bob used on an 18 by 24 canvas, and this is just a 12 by 16. So, don't really need to use a big, thick pile of tape there. Whatever gives you a nice, clean line. I think at this point here, I'm getting a little frustrated. <laughs> so I might break out the, uh, the liquid clear. It's, it's hard to move that color up. You know, just picking up a little color on the on the under part and then scrubbing it, trying to get it right up to that horizon line. There we go. As long as you get it mostly up there, we should be good to go. Sometimes Bob doesn't make a horizon line at all, and he'll just draw that in in certain seascapes here. But now that I've got the color in there, I'm just going to keep scrubbing it apparently. All right, I think we're good. And now we're going to be creating our little uh, land mass way off in the distance. Taking a little bit of that same purple color that I created, add some more black to it or crimson to it if you like, and I'm holding my brush above center and tapping down to create those little spiky little trees. Not a lot of detail back there. And as you see, I put some right over those clouds to make them really stand out. They're way off in the distance. All I really care about is creating the, the top spiky look to it. And then I'll use the brush horizontally and just tap in the indication that the land is, is flat. Maybe it's a prairie. We can't really see any detail because it's nighttime. But tapping the brush horizontally like that will, will flatten it out and give it a, a look of flat land. Sometimes they might not be dark enough, so I'll give it a little tap and just get it all cleaned up. And that's all that we need there. 
Look at the depth and distance that we create there. It pushes those clouds back into the sky, makes them look a little further away. And we're ready to start putting in some indications of where our water and waves are going to be. So I'm using the filbert brush and loading and smoothing plenty of titanium white and following the basics of where I put that phthalo green in, I just trace a basic motion and just let it fall over. And I create the basic shape of the wave. That's it. Just, a, just an outline. And we're going to move that color. So you want there to be some, some bright white there. And then we move on. And I'm going to create a couple of background waves just by pushing it. You can see I kind of ran out of paint there, so I push it in a little firmer. Might have room for one more way back between that second wave and the horizon. If it needs to be a little stronger, we can always add a little bit more. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to move that color backwards. Each of those little lines there is the front of the wave. So we blend the back of those white stripes backwards or upwards, whichever your mind sees, you know, we're blending using these sweeping motions. As I said, you needed a little bit more paint there in order to move it. So now that I have it, there it is. See that? I'm sweeping up, blending the top of that white line upwards. As long as you get it started there, it's going to give the indication of these sort of cresting waves. I blend it upwards or backwards, whichever way you want to think about it, and I leave a little black line between my waves. I think there's a little part there where I didn't have enough paint, so I can just sweep it with a, a fan brush, strengthen that line up a little bit, wipe most of the paint out of the fan brush, and then sweep that color back and forth. Wiggle waggle. Picks up that undercolor, starts adding a little bit of depth to these uh, waveforms, and I'm going to strengthen up that forward one, and look at that. I'm going to blend that back as well. Sort of sideways. There we go. Now you can start seeing the, the waves form a little bit better. It's a little weird at first here, but as you keep doing these, you start to see those waves in your mind before seeing them on the canvas, and it all starts to come together. I believe the next step I do here is creating the transparency. So I take a little bit of the titanium white, I add a small amount of the cadmium yellow, and we're going to create that nice bright spot in our wave. Plenty of color in the brush. See that? I went back for even more. There we go. And just by Bang it in in there, scrub and dub. Get that paint off the brush onto the canvas, leave it alone, and just start trailing off to the left here. Letting it get smaller and smaller, smaller and smaller. Kind of creates a little tadpole look. If you want it brighter, wipe out any excess residue you've picked up in your brush. I pick up a little bit more white and yellow. And I do that step again. You can do this as many times as you need to to get the desired brightness. But since this is a night scene, we don't necessarily want it super bright. 
but it's up to you. Look how that just lightens it right up. Definitely lighter than it was before. And then I trail it out once again. And now we're going to soften it. It's hard to see up in this scene here, but it is kind of swirls in the paint that you can, you can see. So we're going to use our one inch brush and just a couple of tips of the bristles. I really clean that brush out first. We don't want any paint thinner in it whatsoever. So I dry it off really well and just barely touching with the 20 bristles up at the top there. Tiny little circles, little almost tickling, just so light. Blends it out. Try to keep the brush moving across the canvas and work your way out to the left and you can see how it just calms everything down, smooths things out. And now I'm going to create the shape of the wave by gently pulling down and out to the right, creating a, a little curve. important you wipe the brush out if you're going to do this more than once. I give it a quick little swirl here. It wasn't quite blended. Not so much as to let the black start showing through again. And then pull and swoop. Pull and swoop. Let it get a little flatter as I move away from that crashing over bit. All right, what we're going to do now is we're going to create something. <laughs> we're loading the heck out of that in a nice smooth amount of the liquid white in there. And I used the, I'm sorry, it was titanium white and liquid clear. Titanium white and liquid clear, working it through. We're going to create that splash over effect following the basic angle of our main crash over. And I pull it in the same angle, working from away one little stroke, and I start working it up to the transparency. Pulling it over, letting the bristles drag out, that'll create those effects in the water. You only get so many chances here before everything just turns pure white. As you can see here, I, I'm just very lightly letting that paint come off the tips of the bristles, creates those bright lines, but let there be some shadow. Okay? We need some dark parts in that crash over so that those highlights stand out. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to create some shadow of the splash using some of my purple color I created with a little bit of titanium white. Find a shade that's visible there. And I'm just going to be making little swirls with the corner of the brush. This is the shadows of the backsplash. So I work some in over on the right side, top to bottom, and then I swirl in some on the crest of the wave, and I work it down to the bottom. I also work a little bit out to the left, as much or as little as you think it needs there. See how it just defines where the transparency is hanging out? Now we're going to be covering some of this up. So you put as much shadow in there as you think you need. Then we'll clean out our brush. And I'm using a little bit of titanium white and the liquid clear. We want a thinner paint. And I'm going to be pressing up 
See how I'm pushing it in with my fingers and letting those bristles bend and create some splash. As I work my way down, I let there be a little bit of shadow still hanging out there. Bash it in. So we see some highlights and shadows. I get it about halfway down, and then I'll start from the crest of the transparency and bring it down to the middle. It's always easier to splash up while working your way down. That way you're not overlapping what you've already done and covering it up, I should say. There it is. Look at that. We've got highlights now. And then I put out a little bit of foamy stuff there, some little splashes of the crest of the wave moving off to the left. We'll take a moment here with a clean brush and tease out just a little bit. Just give that a little soft little blend here and there between the highlights and the shadows. In doing so, I blended a little bit too much of the shadow away at the bottom of there, so I'm just going to knock a little bit more in. We'll have a little bit more of that purpley shadow. And then splash in a little more white again. Very forgiving, this, this oil paint. Now what we're going to do is start to create some foaminess here at the base. I'm using the Filbert brush, a little bit of titanium white, and I'm just going to be sweeping back and forth. Ooh, maybe I had a little too much paint on my brush there. And I'm just going to be sweeping, trying to create the, the lay of the water, okay? Figure out where that water is swooping. And just under that wave, that's where we know it's, it's that shallow flatness of the water. So I just scratch a little bit in a little more horizontal there. It shows where the flat plane of our beach maybe is. And as I work my way away from the wave, I make it a little flatter in angle. Dropping a little bit in there. It's a little more vertical up by the transparency. And we're not trying to cover it all up at this point. Just try to figure out where this is starting. And to soften that foamy bit, if you want to, just a feather touch with the one inch. Look how it just calms it down, sort of sets it into the water a little bit. Now the wave is really starting to take effect now. It's really starting to look like something. After we get this main part in here, it's all about the detailing. And so, it's time to use the liner brush. And I'm going to be using the liner brush with uh, titanium white or liquid white or liquid clear. If you want it very thin, I use a little, like a single drop of paint thinner. Not too much at all. Just enough to thin down this color, but not enough to melt all the paint on the canvas. Because if you use too much paint thinner, it'll do just that. You roll that brush through the paint, and I, I miss more than I hit, you know? You want that, uh, that brush to be very light. And I put a couple of nice defining spots right at the front of the waves, right at the crest there of those background waves, and put a few up on the top of our main crasher. And I also swirl some in, in between all these waves have 
these foamy things happening in there. They're not just black and white, you know, light and dark, but they have all sorts of detail and things happening in between the, the different wave crests. So putting in little horizontal lines in between them, little vertical lines coming forward, you can create some little shapes there that add all sorts of details. There we go. Strengthening those foreground things, and then I start pulling things this way and that. Little sideways ones here, little vertical ones there. Some coming front to back, others back to front. All about figuring out the angle and as much detail as you want to put in. Up in the front, I want to, ooh, there it goes. Now that really defines it. Let me pull a little bit back. Back and forth. Ripples and ripples and more, more ripples. Really thinning down this paint now, I'm going to create the, the little foamy patterns in my main crasher. And you can see, these are kind of these reverse fish hook motions. And I just swirl it and pull it around. Pull it all. I can't even speak. I pull it around. There we go. I got to thank uh, my friend Nick Hankins for teaching me the reverse fish hooks. I was struggling with these foamy patterns, and he, uh, he, he came up with that term. And using the, the white ones and, and the dark ones, especially right up at the transparency, it's like yeah, I'm hooking away and down. You see that little little hook? And then put a hook around it. And then another hook back and forth. And that's what creates that, that beautiful effect. Reverse fish hooks. Of course, you got to change the angle depending, or change the shape depending on what way your wave is crashing over. But they're almost like little C's, right? With a long tail on a C. I think that's where he came up with the fish hook idea. Or maybe it's a reverse J, if that helps you. Whatever works, it creates some interesting little effects. Now what I'm doing here is I didn't see Bob do this too much, and it always impresses me when I watch watch some people do their water paintings, not just Bob Ross style, but when they're, whenever they're making like uh, the, the foamy seas. And Bob really doesn't often put this kind of detail, but uh, almost like mustaches. That's what I think of. It's like one little swoop, like a smile, and then a smile. Sort of like a mustache. So I'm taking a, a little bit of time here and uh, dropping in some, some little mustaches here and there and some other little shapes and details. Bob did this uh, painting in an oval cutout and uh, so it's like he was right where my hand is right now. He was right near the, the bottom of the oval. I have a little bit more and I realized this, I'm like, I, got, I still have a lot of negative space here, a lot of empty stuff here. So I come back with my filbert brush, and I just wanted to add in a little bit more base color. Okay, just a touch of the white, a little more horizontal motion, just to bring out, look at that, bring out the, the color of the water in the foreground. leaving it darker in the corners. But there we go. Bring out a little bit more uh, that we can see. And then I go back to the liner brush and start making my mustaches. Little swirls. All sorts of details.
I tell you, it starts feeling really good and you want to keep going over and over these things until you don't have any shadows left, until the, all the black is gone. I want to sort of define out that edge of a headland back there. I'm adding lots more swirls and swoops and details here that I've already gone over a couple of times, but you know, you got to do it as many times as you need to get the effect that you like. I realize at this point, I could have put a little bit of a transparency over on that right, very rightmost part past the crasher. But I didn't. So what should I do with that space? Well, I follow along with what Bob says, and maybe we'll put in some rocks, a little stony shore. And the stony shore is made with our palette knife, a little bit of a Van Dyke brown as our base color, and just a little bit of dark sienna to create the highlights, along with titanium white. I always found this to be a quick and dirty way to really spice up. your seascapes. If you want to leave it blank, that's fine. Heck, you could put in palm trees if you want. If you think this is more of a tropical area, Florida, Hawaii, California has palm trees too. Maybe it's the uh, one coast or the other. But what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to slather some of that dark brown. Cover up a little bit of that splash. Make it look like that water is curling over and crashing into the rock. I bring it out a little lower. Make it as big or as little as you want. And if one looks good, well, you might as well try another. So maybe there is another rock here in the middle. Maybe it used to be more of a more of a rock, but now it's it's shrunk down. And look at that, we even have a bigger one off on that side. Maybe it used to be a whole cliff formation here millions of years ago, and it's just got worn away to nothing. As long as it's on there, dark, in a pleasing shape. We're good to go. Now the highlight color I'm going to make with uh, titanium white with a little bit of the dark sienna in it. Nice and marbly. I play around until I find the color that works. There we go. Doesn't take very much. Nice small roll. And you just want to skim it. Just light, light touches. Here and there, working your way down. Sometimes I'll use the small edge of the knife if you have to sneak it into a certain spot. Dance a little bit on that baby rock in the center. And skim and bump down the last rock. It's important that you don't cover it all up. Let there be highlights and shadows working together. And then we're going to clean up the bottom make it look like it's sunk in. I'm using a little roll on the knife to create some, some foamy patterns at the bottom. Help uh, give the impression that it's sunken in. And while I have a little bit, I can create a little bit of 
splash of those far, far away headlands. A little landmass way back there. Putting in a little bit of the bright white around the center rock. A little bit here. Just a little bit. Ooh, that just adds so much right there. Really sinks that rock down into the into the sand. All that water splashing forward and coming back. And I got the bright idea of maybe uh, maybe that water is really splashing down on the rocks, creating all sorts of little rivulets. So I really thin down the paint, and I just sort of trace a couple of ways where there's some water dripping all throughout the rocks there. That's a fun little effect. Gives the rock a little bit more dimension. You can just sort of wiggle your hand back and forth. Which, which way is the water flowing? Doesn't really matter. You get to decide there. Let your arm just sort of trail down. Give it a little wiggle. Very, very thin paint so that it sticks right on top of the thicker paint. And a couple more passes making further and further details. As you step back from your painting now and again, you get to see what needs a little bit more, what needs a little bit less. So as I'm working away from my bright transparency, you want it to get a little bit darker as you go. Some of these need to be bolded up a little bit, some of them need a, a little bit more. Look at that, I just keep playing back and forth and we could spend a lot of time going over and over these things. But at some point, you gotta call it. And you can always go back to it a little bit later. I took a bit of thin color here and just flicked it against my knife to create some little splashes. It is difficult to see at this point. Being this far away from the from the scene here. Splashed it a few times, gives all those little droplets of water. I think with that, we're just about ready to sign this painting. I appreciate it if you stuck with me on this one. I didn't want to just ruin the whole recording here by not having my sound on, so I hope you enjoyed this narration, and I will see you in the next video. Take care, everyone.